the title of my message today is called Connected to Ascend. Connected to Ascend. God's invitation is to get us connected to Him that we may ascend into His presence. Hallelujah. I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 22, um, from the New King James Version. But you can follow me, um, whatever version you have, or what's up there. God's invitation is to get us connected to Him that we may ascend into His presence. Verse 10. Now Jacob went out from Bisheba and went to, toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones that, that place and put it at his head and he lay down in the place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, all your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed. All families of the earth shall be blessed. Can everybody say amen to that verse? Verse 15, behold, I am with you and you will keep you um, and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will never leave you until I have done what I've spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Then Jacob, I'm sorry, and he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob arose early in the morning and took the stone, and that he put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been loose previously. Bethel means house of God. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I surely give a tenth to you. And this was before the commandment to give a tithe. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are always giving us invitation. You are always inviting us to connect with you so that we may ascend into your presence. Father, I pray for your word this morning that is being sent out as an invitation. May your people receive it with gladness. Father, we thank you for ears that can hear, for eyes that can see, for a heart that is ready to accept your invitation with joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's 
So God's invitation, I'm going to repeat this phrase over and over again until you, when you go home, you'll be thinking about this, about God's invitation. Okay, God's invitation is to get us connected to him that we may ascend into his presence. So here we have Jacob's dream of a ladder stretching from heaven, uh, from earth to heaven. This was God's invitation for him to walk from earth to heaven. The ladder was a connection made available by God for Jacob to ascend into his presence. Today we have the blood of Jesus. We just had Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur was yesterday, which means the day of atonement. And uh, it's a day, uh, a very awesome day for the people of God during the OT time and also for the, is for the people in Israel, the the, the Jews. So this, this letter has already been made available to us through the blood of the Lamb. On Thursday night, um, Irene shared a very powerful, um, you know, word about the blood. Um, it was really good. So, you know, the blood of Jesus is so special. That's the way we can connect with God. So this letter is made available for us to walk into heaven through the spiritual realm. You can't walk into heaven without the Spirit of God. Come on now. So it is on earth as it is in heaven. And God sends daily invitation. Are you surprised? He's always sending invitation to connect with you daily. You know, we, you know, for us, we sometimes get a wedding invitation. Sometimes. Yeah. I think in Uganda, they get a lot of invitation because I hear people getting married a lot. <laughs> I mean, and then we get birthday invitation. Then we have invitation for function. So th that is like once in a while. But God sends daily invita invitation, not just one time a day, but several times a day. The question is, did you get the invitation? Did you get God's several invitation each day. And if we have received the invitation, what, what, do we, what do we do with it? So it is not usually just one invitation God sends, but several throughout the day. And the messenger of invitations may come through several mod, okay? Because if we are not paying attention to God, we miss the messenger. I have a list here, but this is not, you know, um, not all, but these are common. So he may send a messenger through a person, and that person could be a little child. God used little children many times. I teach Sunday school. I was in the Sunday school ministry for 20 years. And one of the most special time for me to receive great revelation was from little children. Come on now. We, we, we thank God for, for adult preachers, but when a child speaks to you, there's something about a child because they're innocent. So never brush a child aside because it may be the messenger that God has sent to you for that particular day. It could be people who are given spiritual gifts like in the fivefold ministry. Now, it is very interesting. Um, you probably don't hear it a lot in churches, but actually the other word for, for a fivefold ministry is called ascension gifts. 
Isn't that interesting? It's the gifts of God that, that has been given to the body of Christ to help us ascend into his presence. Hallelujah. So we have apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers and pastors. You know, sometimes we don't really like them. Sometimes we don't really like those messengers. And so we take lightly what God is saying to them, especially if they have somehow said something you don't like about them. Especially maybe they didn't behave the way that you think they should behave. And so when God uses them as a messenger, we're not listening. You know, I, when I think about this, I think about the parable of the vineyard where God sent so many messengers. And what did the people there do? They harassed them. They persecuted them. They, 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 they just beat them. You know, it doesn't matter who God uses. What matters is that when a message is given, regardless of which method, which person that God uses to send that message, you better listen up. One of the greatest rebuke I got was from a person I did not quite like. But the Lord told me, you better listen up. It was very humbling to receive a word from the Lord from a person that I don't like. Come on now. How many of you like that? How many of you like that? Come on. Give me a smile. We don't like that. But God knows how to humble us. Second way that God sends his messenger, his invitation, is a situation. You see the situation of Jacob. He was running away, but God was inviting him in that situation to connect with him. I'll talk a little bit more later about the situation. And then he's, he talks to us, uh, send invitation to us through creation. Scripture tells us that we can know God through creation, and that is a way he tries to connect with us. I know not everybody likes nature, you know, but I like nature. When I am in a place where it's so scenic, I begin to feel the connection with God. And that's where I begin to ascend into his presence. I love scenery. I love birds. I love butterflies. I like all these things that little kids like. They get fascinated. And God speaks to me through birds, through butterflies, through a rose. Sometimes we need to slow down and see what God is saying. The, 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 the hedges, you know, the, the things that you see every day, you p pass them by. Maybe God is using them, this nature, to speak to you. But you're, you, you don't have time. You're just hurrying along. God, of course, used the word of God. We know that God spoke personally to Jacob. It was a personal invitation. And I'm sure you all have your, you know, your testimony about how God spoke to you personally. And it is through the prompting of the spirit. When a person continues to live in carnal way, it is very hard for that person to know when God is sending an invitation. It is hard for that person to receive God's invitation because he cannot hear the Holy Spirit. You see, when you are carnal, your soul speaks louder. Your soul is leading you. And so you can't hear properly. That's why um, Paul 
talks about putting the old man to death because that's the carnal way. And then he speaks to us through dreams and visions. God used a dream to invite Jacob to connect with him. But I have to caution you, not all dreams are from God. Because they are dreams that actually puts you into fear, into torment, and make you feel lustful. Those are not of God because it is not the characteristic of God, neither is it the characteristics of the kingdom of God. But God does speak in dreams and vision. And that's why it's important that we put our carnal way away so that God can even speak to you when you are sleeping. Hallelujah. I love that. Do you know, I enjoy my, my life with God. It is an abundant life because even when I sleep, God speaks to me. I get up in the morning, I have a song in my heart. I get up in the morning, I have a, a word in my heart. I get up in the morning with a dream, a vision. It is a wonderful, wonderful I pray you will all experience this. Signs, wonders, and miracles. That's another way God invites you to connect with him. So when people who insist that they are no more signs, wonders, and miracles, they are evidently rejecting the invitation of God. And, no, and we know how many they are in the church world today. Signs and wonders and miracles is gone. Speaking in tongues is gone. These are all rejecting the invitation of God. It's one of his ways. What about songs? Music and songs are powerful method of invitation for us to connect with God. You see, the enemy knows that, you know, and he uses the very same tool to invite people to connect with him into the dark kingdom. I, I'm so glad that I'm set free from some of the songs I've listened to. Maybe I've shared this, but I'd like to share it in this context. You know, I was, when I was a teenager, I like heavy metal music. I know, you look at me, I'm thinking... She can be. She doesn't look like of somebody who lifts onto heavy metal music, but I did. Even my classmates can't believe because I'm so quiet, and here I am listening to music that gong, chung, 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 and all this, you know, all these things they say. Those are music. A lot of those music. I'm not saying all, but a lot of what I listen to was about death, the occult, witchcraft. Drugs. No wonder I was so messed up. And then the other songs, I like songs that are like ballet songs, you know, but a lot of those ballet songs, you know, they are, they talk about life. And a lot of those life is either somebody, you know, run away with a man and, uh, you know, and then there's uh, committing suicide. Those are songs I listen to. No wonder I was so messed up. We need to soak ourselves with songs that are anointed of God because it takes us into, we connects us with him and brings us into his presence and not into the presence of the enemy. Amen. His invitation comes in unexpected ways. The first one here, when we are hopelessly deep in the mire of sin, he sends an invitation. We may think that now I'm in sin, God doesn't really care. But let us look at Jacob. Jacob was running away from home when God gave him his invitation in a dream to connect him so that he may ascend into his presence and know forgiveness and hope of restoration. He was running away because, you know, Esau was going to kill him because he stole Esau's birthright. But yet, God sent him an invitation. 
So it doesn't matter what sin you have done. God still sends invitation to you to connect. Amen? Isn't that comforting? Second point here, unexpected times. When you are not even looking for God and you can't care less about him, he still sends you an invitation. Look at Jacob, right? You think he's, he's a man of God. He knows God, but I want to point out to you, verse 21, Genesis chapter 28, verse 21, it says, so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. God wasn't his God. That was his father's God. That was his grandfather's God. So Jacob did not have a dynamic personal relationship with God. Yet God sent an invitation to him in his distress to connect him so that he may ascend into his presence, so that he may know that God loves him even before he loved God. Wasn't, weren't we in that situation? Even before we loved God, God had already loved us. While we were yet enemies, God loved us. That's why he sent his son to die for our sin. So I find it comforting that even when we are not looking for him, we can't care less about him. We're so busy with our ways. He still sends invitation. Hallelujah. So you may think that there's people in, in your family, you know, people who do not know the Lord, people, you know, um, who, uh, who are friends, you know, they, they don't really care. But if you keep praying for them, God will send invitation to them. Not just once, but many, many times. Third point. God also sends you invitation when you have a relationship problem. You see, Jacob chose to run away from Esau, and this was encouraged by the mother, okay? Because it was out of fear of his life, so he had to run. You know, there are many times God used a situation where there is a broken down relationship. I want to talk about relationship here. Because many of our relationship can be idols. We can make our friends idols. We can make our spouse an idol. We can make our family an idol. It was something that Pastor Noah brought up on Thursday. And he said that one of the main problems in the United States, and I don't think it's just the United States, it's, it's quite prevalent throughout the world today, especially, I think, in the more developed countries, that families have become our idol. It's very good stuff to be caring for your, for, for your families. But when all this relationship takes the place of God, we have a problem. There are many, many excuses being made about families. I can't do this, you know. Because my family, my family, my family. You know, I can, I can say that too because I struggle with this. You know, God wants to send me to missions and I said, but my family, but my family. God gave you a family so that you can also bring that family into the presence of God. But why do we use our family, our spouse, our friends to be a, to be a hindrance for them to enter and you to accept the invitation enter the presence of God. Come on now. Relationships with people are God's gift. Our problem is we turn gifts into idols. So g when you have a relationship problem, God will still send an invitation so that 
he can get you connected to him and that you may ascend into his presence and not be driven by fear or your disappointment in that relationship, no anger, no offense, no bitterness, no hatred, no unforgiveness. He wants you to not be driven by those things. So he wants you to connect with him so that you can enter into his presence and then he can bring healing reconciliation and restoration amen next point about the unexpected way of god's invitation when you have lost someone you treasure this is hard this is one of the hardest things you see jacob and his mother had a very close relationship he was the, um, you know, the guy that go, goes with the mother everywhere. It's, he was the mother's boy, I think. So now he's running away from home. His mother is not by his side. It must feel very lonely and hard for him. But in his loneliness and need for comfort, God sent an invitation to him to connect with him so that he may ascend into his presence for comfort. You see, life throws a lot of punches like divorce, separation, you know. I'm not even talking about death. It, there's death too. But separation, not just husband and wife, but separation. When, when the Lord moved me from one place, I remember, I won't mention places but there was one place place I had a very few you know I have few close friends that I really love so much they were like a lifeline for me and when I got transferred you know my husband had to transfer I cried and I cried you know in that new place I said God why did you take me away from my friends and these were believers. They were strong believers that were helping me to grow. And I cried. And I cried for, you know, one or two weeks, I think, every day. And finally, the Lord spoke to me. He said to me, am I not more than all your friends? And I thought, Okay, wait a minute here. Something's wrong. My friends have become the one that I'm seeking for help. It, it has become that my friends have been my all. And here he was checking me. Am I not more for you than your friends? And I repented. But even in such difficult time of loss, God sends, still sends invitation to connect with him so that as we ascend into his presence, we may find strength and hope to move on. I'm not even saying just move on, you know. I'm saying in God's kingdom, even if there is a loss, you advance. It is not hopeless moving on. Oh, I have to move on, even though it's a loss. If I don't, everything else is going to fall apart. I'm not talking that kind of moving on, and that's what a lot of people do. But in God's kingdom, this is the irony of God's kingdom. Always, when there is a loss, there is a gain in God's kingdom. Come on now. Because Jesus died that we may have life. It was, it seems like a loss, but it was a gain. We have to remember that with God, there is no hopeless loss. The, the, the final point in the unexpected way of God's invitation, final point for that, not final point yet, <laughs> it's still early. <laughs> when you are at loss of what to do, the end of yourself, Jacob, seems so in control, right? When, when he deceived his brother, you know, with a bowl of porridge, he was so in control. When he was trying to deceive his brother, and he eventually did, because he was so full of confidence. But now, when he's running away from God, he's, 
broken, he's at the end of himself. He doesn't really know what is going to happen. He doesn't really know what to do. And at this point, regardless of that circumstance that he, it was his own making, it was his own making, but yet God still sent an invitation for him to connect with God so that he may ascend into his presence and receive blessings, God's promise. You see, you see the, the promises that God gave him, even though he has made a mistake? You know, verse 14, he says, God said to him, also your descendants shall be as dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and east to the north and south. And in you and your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That God is awesome. Now, Jacob clearly made a mistake, but yet God is so good. God transcends over your mistakes. If you will accept his invitation, you will receive the blessings of God's promises and the assurance of his presence. He's, God say, I will not leave you until all these things have come to pass. So I don't know if, have you, ha if you have made mistake. That is because the, the consequences is because of your own mistake. It doesn't matter. Just receive God's invitation to ascend with him. And the promises that he has for you, he's going to make sure he will not leave you until those promises are fulfilled. Come on, somebody, shout hallelujah. Hey, I'm excited. And you're like, guys, looking at me like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> okay. We, we're going on to another uh, uh, section of this um, message. It says, God knows your name. He knows your address. He knows your phone number. I've read of stories where, you know, um, or heard of stories where um, a man was just passing by this, uh, uh, you know, telephone, you know, public phone, and it was ringing, and he was passing by. And uh, he wasn't sure what to do, but then he picked it up. Guess what? It was for him. I mean, that, was, that wasn't one story I've heard, but there are a few. I, was, I can't remember that book that uh, we had. Uh, what was the name? Uh, God's Got Your Number, something like that, right? That book has a lot of uh, uh, testimonies like this. So God knows your name. He even knows your nickname. Hmm. I know some, some of you don't probably won't like uh, other people to know your nickname, but I like this one nickname. Okay, don't use it on me, though. <laughs> I'm just saying it's cute. Um, you know, this, I heard this uh, guy, you know, calling his wife, Pooch, you're my Pooch. I thought that was so cute. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it sounds so cute, you know. And I have heard, <laughs> and I have heard of uh, you know people calling each other Dada, you know. And I, I think that was the short form for darling. I think you know Dada. But you know, in 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 Malaysia or uh, Indonesia, Dada means drugs. So oh, that's that's <laughs> that's too much, eh? <laughs> And then I have, I've heard of a nickname like Booba. And I'm thinking, Booba? <laughs> but it's cute, right? But um, these are all nicknames. God knows you even by your nicknames. Come on now. <laughs> uh, you see, you may, have, you may receive mails, you know, in your, your box or, you know, and... and the address is correct, but the name is not yours. You know, God will never send you a letter to your address with the wrong name. He'll, he'll get it all right. And you see there are people who call a number asking for your number, but calling for another person. But God does not make the mistake. Once he calls you, it will be your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to bring up a point here. You know, many times when we hear God's word being preached, because I've done it before, okay? I hear a good message. I said, aha, this message is for this person. Come on now. 
Uh, I know a lot of you <laughs> because I did that too. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> 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 because many times when we share God's word, we think that this word is for that person. But the, the point is when you heard that message that day, it was God's, clearly it was God's invitation for you too. Hey. <laughs> Uh, so you have to accept that invitation first before forwarding it to the other person. <laughs> you see, God is not a keyboard or a mouse or a touch phone. So you don't use him and click here, click there, and then swipe and then send forward to another person before you allow the invitation of God to minister to you. Come on now. You know, you cannot delete him too. You can try delete his invitation. You may think it's junk mail. Huh? But I tell you, I assure you, God's word is not junk mail. He will keep sending you the invitation again and again. You delete, you come again. You delete, you come again. It's like some of those mails you receive, you know. You delete, it still comes. Even though we say it's junk mail, you know, put it in junk mail, it still comes. And God is like this. There's no junk mail with him. It's just us who think it's junk mail. So you may keep blocking, even block his invitation, but ultimately it will be to your detriment. I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 3, 15 to 29. Okay, I'm going to read from the um, complete Jewish Bible because there are words that they use. Um, it's kind of different from the King James Version. I'm not saying that King James Version or CJB Version is the best, but, you know, um, and there are certain things that, um, that has been translated that is not quite accurate and also does not bring up the meaning that was um, intended initially by God. Okay, so from the CBD, uh, CJB, today if you hear God's voice, so today if you hear God's invitation, don't harden your hearts as you did in a bitter quarrel. Who were the people after they heard, heard what? After they heard God's invitation, quarreled so bitterly. All those whom Moshe brought out of Egypt, Moses, all those whom God has brought out of bondage through Jesus Christ, and with whom God was disgusted for 40 years. Man, disgusted with those whom he gave up invitation for 40 years, they won't accept it. Can you imagine being disgusted 40 years with somebody? Man, that's half of our life. I don't want God to be disgusted with me for 40 years. Come on now. <laughs> that's half of your life. Those who sinned, yes, they fell dead in the wilderness. And to whom was it that he saw that they would not enter his rest? So those who would not accept his invitation, okay, delete or block, you know, to be connected to him into his presence will not enter rest even while on earth. You see, the Lord, the, 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 um, the word of God says that if, if we will not humble ourselves before God, he will resist us. He will resist us. That's why when God resists us, we will not have rest. Every day we seem we have so much problem. And sometimes we think it's a devil. We blame the devil. We blame this person. But actually, it may be God resist, resisting you. And that's a scary thing to me. I'd rather please God. Because I know when I please him, he will exalt me in every situation. He will give me favor. He will not resist me. So, so those who were disobedient, you know, they, they were unable to enter, because, enter into that rest because of the lack of trust. And I want to mention uh, one thing here because... Uh, it's so often quoted this way, and we have taught it in a certain way um, that I feel like, you know, it's important for me to say it today. 
um, that's that verse that says, many are chosen, but few are called. You've heard that, right? But actually, um, the, accur that, the accurate translation for that is from um, the, the CJB. It says, many are invited. It makes a lot of difference. Many are invited, few are called. Do you see how different it is? The invitation we're given. And this goes along with the wedding feast that we're going to um, look at later on. God is always ready to have an appointment with us. And that is why he's always sending us invitation. He's not sending out. You know, there's some invitation. I, I heard this. He said, um, you know, um, recently, you know, I said, hey, how come... How come you're sending out so many invitation, but actually you're during your the reception there's only for two hundred people, but you have sent out like three four hundred. And the groom told me, he said, you know, not everybody will accept the invitation, and we know that. And usually it's less than half that will accept your invitation. And I thought, oh. I have forgotten about, you know, our marriage. I don't know. <laughs> Cuz I didn't we didn't do that, right? <laughs> so, when God sends an invitation, he expects us to have that appointment with him. Come on now. So, what are, what are some of the appointed times that he he wants with us? Sometimes it is that time alone. Do you have a set appointment time with him? Every day? Do you? Oh, and how, how long is your appointment with him? When you have an appointment with a boss, you know, trying to look for an interview or be your boss or somebody, you don't want like a five minutes time with that person, correct? So let's think about God. The most important person in your life the King of kings, the Lord of lords, your creator, the one who supplies all your needs, all the names that we were singing about, Jehovah Sikanu, the Lord of righteousness, Jehovah Rapha, all that is so important in our lives. How's appointment time with him? And some of his appointment time is when he calls the church he calls for an assembly, not necessarily a church. You know, to assemble together, to be together. You know, we have this, um, you know, a theme that's going on f this, um, this year for IFGF together. It may be a church service. It may be a Bible study. It may be a prayer meeting or fellowship meal as a body of Christ. And during those times, God wants to meet with us, even if it's a crowd. When a king presents himself, a president, or it's always a crowd, right? Why would the, the king be by himself for an appointment? So many of us take appointment times for granted. And I was telling, I can't remember which son I was talking to. He said, I, one day I said, I don't feel like going to church. I'm the pastor, okay? I said, I don't feel like going to church. And, and my son said, oh, I guess you don't have to. I said, no, I have to. I'm the pastor. <laughs> you see, sometimes you are obligated to make an appointment. But that's not the kind of appointment I'm talking about. When you meet with God, you meet him because you enjoy him. You want to be his in presence, not because you have to. And the other problem why we take appointments lightly is because, you know, we don't like to be among some people, you know. There, there are places I don't want to go when I'm being invited because I know some people there. i either afraid to meet them or I don't like them. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> there was one place I really didn't want to go. For years, I refused to go because I had done something foolish there. <laughs> and I didn't want to meet some of those people. So I didn't make the appointment. So I don't know what's your reason for not making appointment with God. In the Old Testament times, when God called the people to assemble together for either the word, his word, he has a word for them, to pray, you know, for a feast celebration, they all, 12 tribes of Israel will take it seriously and they will assemble before God. Now, think about 12 tribes here. That's about 2 million people, I think. Not counting the women and children, that's, that's my figure. I, uh, I believe was the figure that when they came out of, uh, East, uh, of Egypt, there were about tw two million, am I correct? Two million men, Did not counting the children and, uh, and, uh, and the w women. So now this is 12 tribes of Israel. Don't you think they have serious relationship problem too? Oh, don't tell me the 12 tribes of Israel were so nice with one another. They were so united. <laughs> I don't think so. We, people are people. But when God called for an assembly, 12 tribes of Israel were there. They took it seriously to make this appointment with God. But here we are in this present time, Filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, washed by the blood of the Lamb. An announcement is made, be assembled before the presence of God. Then we have this, this scenario later, what we'll talk about in the wedding. The wedding as in the, the parables, okay? I don't have a wedding later on. <laughs> Because <laughs> some people say that when I talk, sometimes I, I switch my, my, my topic so fast they don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Was it a real feast, a real, real wedding? So I'm just letting you know I'm going to talk about that later. Okay, there is no real wedding. It's a parable. So the, te the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel, they, they, they were camped around. God instructed them to be camped around the tabernacle. The tabernacle was in the center. Why is it so? Because it represents God's presence in the midst of them. It was a deliberate instruction of God so that God becomes the center of their life. We have this song, I think, by Israel. It says, Jesus be the center of it all. Sometimes I wonder how true that is in our lives. Of course, there are legitimate, you know, cases. But if we are honest with ourselves, you know, many times our appointment, we miss our appointment with God because other things are more important than keeping an appointment with him. So let's go to read that um, passage about that wedding feast. But I'm going to read it from the uh, complete Jewish Bible. Some of you are you know, have phone that are able to go there. But um, here I'm going to read it. Matthew 22, verse 1 to 14. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. But when he sent his slaves to summon the invited guests to the wedding, they refused to come. Now, this is the king. I mean, if a king sends me an invitation, I think the only reason I would not be there is maybe I don't have the right clothes to wear. Because I, I, I'm not a very fancy person, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of, most of the time, very just not elegant in my dressing, you know. So I would have problems trying to go to a, you know, a king's invitation. But here... So he sent some more slaves, instructing them to tell the guests, Look, I've prepared my banquet. I've slaughtered my bulls and my fattened cattle, and everything is ready. You know, there's steak. Come on, man. Come to the wedding. There's meat. <laughs> Whoa. 
but they weren't interested and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, and the rest grabbed his, grab his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. That's what they did with his messenger. The king was furious and sent his soldiers who killed those murderers and burned down their city. Whoa, that was an angry king. Then he said to his slaves, well, the wedding feast is ready, but the ones who were invited didn't deserve it because he, he burned everything down. So go out to the street corners and invite to the banquet as many as you can find. The slaves went out into the streets, gathered all the people they could find, the bed along with the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. I find that very intriguing. Because normally a king would not invite all those people. It will be people who knows how to behave themselves, how to carry themselves, how to dress, how to speak properly. The elite. But the king called for those in the street. What a gracious king we have. Verse 11. Now when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who wasn't dressed for a wedding. So he asked him, friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot. Now he just called him friend. But he said, bind him hand and foot, throw him outside in the dark. In that place, people will well and grind their teeth, for many are invited, but few are chosen. The wedding feast was God's invitation for, God's, for, for people. We will, we, all this invitation that we are getting every day, every day, is for that final invitation to the great wedding feast with Jesus Christ, our bridegroom. Come on now. Are you getting it? Are you getting why God's invitation is so important? Because it's to connect with him, ultimately, to be at that great wedding feast. Okay. What is the intention of God's appointment in his invitation? Number one, he says, be connected to him. Draw me and I will draw near to you. And the second point is that to celebrate with him. God wants us to celebrate with him. God doesn't want to do it alone. He wants that pleasure of celebrating together with us. To have fellowship with him. To feed at his table. Song of, Song of Solomon, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 4 says, descri it, it describes the banner, the banner in God's banquet hall. You know, you know in, in all lot of these, uh, you know, functions, you have these banners, you know. But in God's, in God's banquet hall, his banner over us is love. Hallelujah. God sends us his invitation to bring us under the banner of his love. So to ascend into his presence, it's, you know, ultimately, it's, it's in, in the spiritual realm while we are here on earth. So God is sending us invitation after invitation so that we can ascend. Okay. Um, now, many of us, when we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, we, we go one step. And then we go a few more steps. You see, when we are ascending, when we are going up a staircase... We don't just stop halfway. Like if you are going up to your bedroom, you don't stop halfway because you're not going to get there. We know that we are going somewhere. Believers, right? 
But we go one step, I think, okay, I'm serving the Lord, another step, and then, okay, I'm, I'm studying God's word, okay, another step. But after a while, we stop. God wants us to connect with him so that we will be ascending higher and higher and higher from earth through the spirit realm into heaven. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? <laughs> so why do we all stop along the way? Why? First, I'm going to go quickly through this. First, because we lack the strength, the stamina, or the tenacity to push forward. In fact, uh, on Thursday night, I had a vision, very curious vision, but I think it really speaks about the, 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 the problem in the church. I saw this faucet, water faucet, you know, a lot of things happen in a prayer night, you know, overnight prayer. Um, this um, faucet, and I saw a um, few people, and then uh, two or three was pumping the water, you know. We don't see this now, you know, in, in places like America, you know, not in a city, I think. Um, maybe in the villages or in the countryside, I don't know, but, you know, we're pumping. But... You know, they pump a few times and then they stop. But there wasn't enough water. There was lots of water. And then there were other people just standing around, you know. And it, 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 it shows like in this, in this um, I just thought about it now, you know, about that vision. It seems like we lack the strength, the tenacity, the, the stamina to keep pushing on. And so we stop halfway. We become complacent. You know, we, we don't have a vision. You know, it was it was funny when um, in one of uh, their conference we have the IFGF conference, and um, I think one of the young people I can't remember uh, the exactly this who asked the question, but they said, you know, said to the apostles, they said, but you know, we don't really have a vision, and I, I remember one of the apostles, said, but we have a lot of vision for the church. Come on now, you see sometimes. We don't see the vision because our eyes are not focused on the Lord. If, even, even for this church, how many of you know the vision of IFGF in this church? How, how many of you know what is the vision for their English congregation? Come on now. You can look at your bulletin and find out. I won't give you a test. <laughs> we... We don't. We do not focus on God, you know, but on men, and we focus on trials and difficulties, you know, offenses and hurts, and so we stop halfway. Or we are too busy with life, living a life in the cares of the world, and some of us think we have arrived and know it all. And and some of us are rebellious and proud, and we would not humble and submit ourselves to the Lord, you know, and, and to the passengers, you know, that he's appointed and sent to us because we don't like the personality, because we don't like the way they dress, whatever it is, I don't know. We have allowed, and also we have allowed the enemy to steal, lie, and oppress us, and so we stop halfway. Some of us don't even go halfway. To ascend means to go all the way to the top, the ultimate place you need to go. So people of God, we need to keep ascending. We need to receive the daily invitation of God to connect with him that we may ascend to the place where he wants us to be, that we may ascend until even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. We need to be like Enoch. Enoch walked with God for 300 years and he was not and God took him. How many years did Enoch walk with God? 300 years. And some of us can't even walk with God for a day. I am amazed with this man. Walked with God 300 years, pleasing God. And he didn't even have the Holy Spirit at that time. He, wasn't, he, he doesn't have all the grace that we have at this time. And he walked with God. 
for 300 years? Wow, I'm ashamed. Because there are days that I am totally out. I used to, okay, I'm not saying every day now, I don't. This is the final ascension, is the day that we will be together with the Lord. And all these things, like I have said many times before, these are rehearsals. These are rehearsals for the second coming of Jesus Christ. What we are doing every day, accepting his invitation, all these are rehearsal for the great wedding feast. So will you accept the daily invitation of God to connect with him and ascend to his presence? If you have rejected God's many invitations, now is the time to repent. I'm going to sing a little song. It's a very awesome. I'm going to ask Pastor Noah to help me here. And while I'm singing that song, I want you to begin to ask the Lord to search your heart about the many invitations he has sent you but you have not received. <clears throat> or maybe you, you didn't even hear. It's actually a song about inviting people to accept Jesus Christ, but I want you to hear this song as an invitation of God for an appointment with Him.